Hello and welcome to the Blueprint modding tutorial. I'm gonna first run through um, all the things you need to get started um, and then I'll start running through the actual methods of blueprinting like um, native spawning and I'll talk about that later. Um, so firstly um, you're going to need a few tools. Um, so first you're going to need DRG Packer. Um, you should already know how to use this if you don't um, I don't know what you're doing here really. Um, uh, you should have had a look at the um, general guide, Rollicans general guide first. Um, and then also an asset editor like asset editor, um, uasset GUI, DRG parser, meta editor. I don't know if those last two will work uh, for you anymore. Um, but but the first two, uh, so asset editor and US at GUI, I'll put links in the description. Um, you should know how to use one of those. Um, you will need an IDE, so this can be Visual Studio, this can be Rider from Rule Engine. Um, I recommend this version, um, this, this IDE, because it's made for Unreal Engine, as you can tell from the title. Um, and it's free, at this current point at least. Um, and I'll put a link in the description to the survey you have to complete to get the access to the free license. Um, don't get confused between Rider for Unreal Engine and Rider. They're two different things, sort of. Um, and then C-Line is another one that, that I use. Um, and then a code editor to look to look at the dumps. So this could be Visual Studio Code, Notepad++, um, or any of the IDEs that, that are above. So I use Rider for Unreal Engine for my IDE, and then C-Line for looking at the, the dumps. C-Line is C++ and C sort of stuff. Um, you also will need the actual dumps. Um, again, link will be in the description to the GitHub repository. Uh, look at the most recent dumps. Um, so, at the time of recording, it's the Mod.io experimental update. So, update 34.5 is the name for it. Um, so, I'd be using those ones. And then also, um, the current version that Unreal Engine is on. Um, so, for me, currently, that's 4.25.4. Uh, by the time you're watching this, maybe they would have updated to 4.26. I know they're planning that soon. Um, or even higher, um, even further. So just make sure you're on the right version. If you don't know, just ask in mod chat, stuff like that. So um, another prerequisite I think is very important is to watch this video. Um, even if you generally know what blueprints are, which you should, you should generally know the basics of blueprinting in Unreal Engine and a little bit of Unreal Engine at least. Um, just, just I'd say this is a absolute prerequisite. You have to watch this video. It's like 34, 40 minutes long, but it's really good at explaining how blueprints and C++ work um, in Unreal Engine. So I'll put a link in the description again to that. Um, so a bit of a disclaimer: um, this tutorial will become out of date. Um, Obviously, things, new methods are um, being um, found out, so I'm already, I'm currently working on a couple of new methods, possibly. Uh, but if if there are any significant changes that makes parts of this guide up to date, I are out of date. I will try to update the dis um, description with any updates. So now I'll go on to the methods of loading mod into DRG. So first, there's native spawning. Um, this was um, implemented in the mod.io update by the developers and it just makes um, spawning blueprints easier so you don't need any frameworks developed by modders so you don't need blueprint mod manager or DRG label we'll talk about that later and it can be interfaced with one of those two um, for UI and advanced functionality uh, you can obviously have your own UI if you want you can have your own widgets you can do all of the other stuff um, it just makes things easier and then there's pre-native spawning, so this is what we did before native spawning existed. Um, so we used a framework called Blueprint Mod Manager, and um, this basically gave mods a UI, it's meant to be simple. Um, and basically what it, how it works is, um, it took a useless part of the game, we used the credits um, part of the options menu, sorry about that developers, um, and it basically used that, which is always loaded in the game, uses that to basically hook blueprints loading into the game. Um, but of course with native we don't need to do it anymore, but we can still do it with pre-native. 
if you want. So this is kind of called the alternate method in um, the then the guide, which I'll show later as well. It will also be in the description. It, it has the advantage still that it mods uh, it loads mods earlier than native. So in in init space rig, which we'll talk about again later, um, it loads mods around about the same time when the player is initialized in the space rig. Um, in in it cave, however, native spawning currently at least spawns the mod after the drop pod has landed. So there's all that time whilst players are in the drop pod where they could be doing stuff that the mods aren't loaded. Um, in uh, pre-native spawning, it's um, the mod is loaded right as the players are initialized in the drop pod, um, which can be advantage. So there's a there's a mod I'm working on currently which would have a problem if it was native spawning because it needs to track stuff that the player is doing possibly inside the inside the drop pod whilst it's going down. Um, and all legacy blueprint mods that haven't been transferred to native spawning um, use this method. So they will they were to use Blueprint Mod Manager as a dependency. So we'll talk about Blueprint Mod Manager. Um, and it's developed by Arctic Echo, who's one of the admins on the DRG Mining Discord. Um, it provides on start and it start it provides some events. Um, if you're using the the pre-native method, um, it gives you some events like on start, on stop, it has like UI um, events on initialize stuff like that um, it also gives modders um, like the, the UI container for their mods so it looks really nice um, all the mods that are loaded with blueprint mod manager um, are in like a nice list and you can click on each one and they have their own mod menu that comes up and that says the mod author and the version and the name and it's really nice and also with native spawning Arctic also added a new feature um, where mods can also be enabled and disabled from the mod menu without having to go into the modding tab and enable and disable and then reload the space and all that stuff. Now um, we'll talk about DRG lib, so that's an alternate loader um, from Blueprint Mod Manager. This was developed as native spawning came out, so this is only on native spawning. And it's developed by Samamster, who was the guy who, within our community, really worked out how to um, dummy C++ classes and methods and delegates and all that stuff into the game, into our blueprint mods. Again, we'll talk about this later, but this was an absolute game changer for that, for us. This really, and it, it turns out that like, you know, obviously other games had discovered this previously, but we weren't aware of that. We we're just doing it with ourselves. And this was, you know, this unlocks a lot of new possibilities. And uh, DRGLib differs from BPMM in that it's more complex. So BPMM is meant to be so very um, simple but functional and all that stuff. So it's really just meant to do the job. DRGLib gives you loads of new functionalities. So helper functions of your blueprints really nice sometimes. Um, it gives you um, new DRG like uh, UI objects, so like buttons that are the DRG buttons, checkboxes that look like the DRG checkboxes, all that stuff. It's really awesome. And again, it gives the modders a centralized container for their mods. Um, but on top of that, it also um, gives um, mods like settings, um, configs for their UIs, and they can have like a hierarchy of uh, mod menus within. It's it's really cool. It's really cool. Um, so the, so within native and non-native, there's both of them. Uh, it doesn't really matter. There's two different methods of blueprint modding. There's no dummy method. Um, this doesn't require any knowledge of C++. Um, it doesn't require any reading of the game dumps. Um, it's it's only limited to built-in Unreal Engine functions and events. Um, but this this is still quite a lot of stuff. Uh, but the, there's you know you're, you're limited. You can't use C++, you can't use the functions and variables stuff in the game. Um, if you do want to use that, there's the dummy method. Um, this this requires a very, very, very basic level of C++. Maybe not even C++, maybe you just need to generally know how programming sort of works. Um, you need to... Um, well, with dummy method, you can uh, manipulate functions, variables, events. Um, you can change them, you can call functions. 
Um, if an event is called, you can you can bind off that, um, and it's really awesome. Um, and then uh, you, you can uh, use the reflected header dumps to find the relevant classes. So if I want to find the Bosco class, and I want to self-destruct him or something, we'll go over that in a, in a later example. Um, you can you can look in the dumps for that, and then you can dummy the right blueprint or class or whatever, and then just tell it to uh, basically access that function from your blueprint, and it's all good. Um, and then within dummy method, there's two sub methods. There's writing the actual dummy C++ classes um, and creating dummy blueprints. Um, so we'll, again, we'll go over those in two separate examples. And there's a few useful acronyms to know. I'll just kind of list them here. Um, there is a much longer list in the general guide for like everything, as far as I'm aware. Um, but yeah, there's some useful things here, and you know, obviously blueprint stands for blueprint. <laughs> but yeah, um, and now um, next I'll show you how to set up your Unreal Engine workspace, um, and then I'll get on to like actually making your mods. So I'll just show you how you set up your project because it's very important one part. So I got all of these projects with my previous ones. Um, so. If you want to create a project, what you do is you set games, next. Uh, make sure it's a blank project, next. Blueprint, um, maximum quality, ray tracing, no starter content, desktop console. And then, uh, it has to be called, absolutely has to be called FSD. Um, now this is the the games, the original games, probably code name or something. I'm not really sure what it stands for. Um, but many games have these for various reasons. So I'm just going to select where I want it. Uh, so I, I want it in here because this is my sort of this, this video tutorial thing. So this is where this project will be. You can move it or whatever afterwards. 